We all know that sentiment plays an incredibly important part when it comes to financial markets, but how can you use the market sentiment tool, the breakdown between buyers and sellers to better analyze markets and increase your chances of a profitable trade? We've had a few requests lately to, to take a look at our market sentiment tool. So um, this is what we're going to do in this video. Here's here's the price of gold. So at the time of recording, we'd seen gold push out to uh, fresh all-time highs. It has reversed quite sharply, as you can see here uh, at, at the time of recording. Uh, we've punched as high overnight as about $1980 an ounce. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk a bit more about this market sentiment you can see on the right hand side. We're going to look at a mix of different markets, look at ways we can use it to trade both with the masses and more importantly, against the masses at major market turning points. So I'm going to talk a bit more about what makes this tool up. Then we'll come back and uh, look at it in more detail and have a look at some markets and see if we can set a trade up. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com. And I thought it would be interesting to do um, another video on trading strategy. This time around, we will look at the sentiment uh, analysis tool. This can be a useful way of uh, a couple of things. First of all, trading with the masses and perhaps more importantly, trading against them when a market's gone to extreme. So in this video, I'll talk about how it's composed um, and how we can use it to set up uh, low risk but potential high reward trades. As usual, if you're watching this um, and you haven't subscribed, if you could click on subscribe, it helps us uh, continue to, to grow the channel and push out uh, regular and hopefully useful uh, market content, whether it's on strategies or the various market analysis we do uh, during the month. I'm going to jump on the platform in a second and uh, just go through a few things in more detail when it comes to sentiment analysis. But first of all, let's talk about what it is. So within the capital.com uh, trading platform, it looks at uh, positions, positions our clients have. So on something like pound against the dollar, for example, a popular market like that, it looks at all the trades that clients have up and running at the moment. What percentage are long? What percentage are short? So how many think the market's going to rise? How many think the market's going to fall? So it's a pretty straightforward calculation, but it can give us some real insight into um, the psychology surrounding a market. Of course, when it comes to short-term trading, it's it's no secret um, that there is a minority of people uh, who make money. You know, for most people, short-term trading is difficult, and I've talked about the reasons uh, for this before. I think I think plenty of traders go against major trends, uh, so end up trying to go short um, gold, for example, if it's soaring higher and losing money. Traders uh, do tend to be quite short-term, so worrying about perhaps the next few minutes, next few hours, rather than looking at the bigger picture. And also poor risk management, um, risking losing too much uh, on a trade. So if most traders end up being wrong, um, then clearly if we can get a snapshot of what most traders are doing, that can add a bit more colour to our own uh, market analysis. And this is exactly what the sentiment analysis does. It gives us an instant snapshot of which way uh, clients are positioned in the market, which way they think it's going to go. Let's jump on the platform and just take a look at a couple of examples. So when you bring up a market in our platform, so I've searched for pound US dollar, top left in the search button up here. So I've got my chart at the bottom uh, and then over here on the right hand side, this is what we're talking about. And it's quite interesting actually at the moment, if I maximise the chart, so from late June through to where we are now, the pound has risen by uh, about 600 points. So we've seen a decent rise. But look at that market sentiment. Uh, at the moment, um, the majority, almost 70% of our clients who've got a position are, are short the pound. Um, so they're, they're perhaps feeling the pain a little bit if those short positions have been running uh, for a while. And I think there's a lot we can take from that. We're going to come back in a second and uh, look to take place a trade on. So that's where we've got sentiment going against the trend. Let's take a look at a more, uh, perhaps more positive market, uh, the price of silver. So silver's seen some massive volatility uh, in recent days. It, it did push out to its best levels overnight uh, for many years. Look at market sentiment. So we have 89% um, of clients who've got a position with silver are uh, are long, uh, and they will have been well rewarded uh, over recent days and weeks as the price has moved higher. Maybe feeling a bit of pain uh, overnight, but an example there where uh, the, the market sentiment has been with that medium term trend. And I think there are ways we can use this to set up trades. I'm going to talk about it a bit more, then we're going to come back and uh, place a trade using market sentiment. 
So I'd start off by saying we're going to look at a different ways, different ways of using this now. But I start off by saying, of course, no, no, no strategy works all the time, no technique works all the time. But I think sentiment analysis can add some color uh, when we're looking at markets. For me, price action is still important. So if a market is rising, for me, what the price is doing is the most important thing. So sentiment analysis can help back uh, that up. If we're seeing plenty of positive sentiment in a market and the market's moving higher, you could argue it does add something to the trend. But perhaps the more interesting approach is where sentiment reaches an extreme. We have an extreme reading of bullishness, where nearly everybody appears to be expecting a market market rise, or an extreme reading of bearishness, where everyone's expecting a market continue to fall. There are lots of examples of this. I mean, a couple of high-profile examples I can think of uh, from my recent trading in recent years. Bitcoin is a really obvious one. Um, late 2017, when we'd seen that fantastic rise for Bitcoin, Bitcoin in the last quarter of 2017, um, plenty of people thought the price is going to carry on going through the moon. And of course, in 2018, uh, the price crashed. A more recent example, I think, is um, oil from back in April. I think if you're watching markets in April, um, there was absolutely tons of coverage when the uh, the futures contract, the front month, the May month uh, for West Texas oil went negative, traded nearly minus $40 a barrel. And then looking at the sentiment analysis on the platform, uh, nearly everybody was bearish on oil. Uh, sentiment had really reached an extreme. And of course, since then, we have seen this really strong recovery in oil. So I think it's tying up these extremes with what's actually going on in the market. So if we're looking at a widely traded market and uh, perhaps sentiment, the sentiment is at an extreme, but the price isn't confirming it, it can be an early sign of a reversal. Or if we look at a market where the trend is clearly strong, but sentiment is uh, somewhat mixed, it can suggest that perhaps we haven't reached extremes yet and the trend could have further to go. Let's take a look at some real examples from some popular markets. And I think popular markets are the ones we need to focus on here, the really highly, tra highly traded ones to get a good picture of sentiment. Just to quickly go back to that silver chart, we do have an extreme for sentiment. You know, nearly nine out of 10 of our clients who are trading silver are long silver. We've seen a sharp reversal overnight. So I think perhaps the contrarian trade here, if you thought that um, sentiment had reached an extreme, is wait for a reversal. And we do have at the moment what's known as dark cloud cover when it comes to candlestick charting. It can be a short to medium term reversal pattern. So if you thought, well, actually, sentiment is too extreme. We have seen that just blip down slightly. Uh, so it's updating in real time. Um, perhaps one strategy could be if you think people are wrong at this major turning point, look to go short. So we, we could go short at uh, 2350 where it's trading now. And where I would put my stop loss would be above that overnight high. That overnight high is, is just above $26. So you could use it when it's at an extreme um, to, to put a trade on for the trend to go the other way. But what I'm going to use it for is a trade on euro dollar because I think it's really interesting sentiment on euro dollar at the moment. Let's bring it up. Before we look at it, we do have a trade running at the moment on the euro against the dollar. So we've been long since the 27th of May uh, from um, just below 110 on euro dollar. Uh, the market's currently 117. So we've made 700 points on that trade. I've moved the stop up. We're up 1100 pounds. So I'm quite happy to add to that position uh, if that's what the sentiment's telling me. Let's take a look at the euro US dollar chart. So euro US dollar is a really popular market, uh, the, the most popular foreign exchange pair out there. And I think it's really interesting what the market sentiment is telling us at the moment. So the trend for euro US dollar off those March lows is positive. So the market's gone from 106. We've got a good trend in place here. We're trading. We recently punched up near 118. And that's the highest level. We've got to go back to September 2018. So we're at What's that? A 20, 22 month high for the euro against the dollar. So the trend is up, but still, um, we're not seeing an extreme in sentiment. In fact, most people trading euro, US dollar with us uh, are short. Let's zoom in again on the last few months. So if you've watched any of the videos you we do in the past, you know, I'm a big fan of trading with the trend. For me, that trend is clearly up. Perhaps in the short term, it could do with a correction. But the market sentiment is telling me at the moment we haven't reached an extreme in terms of bullishness, in terms of positivity. So I think the trade for me 
it doesn't appear at the moment as if everyone thinks the euro is going to the moon. So it does suggest, because of course most people are wrong when it comes to markets, that the euro could have further to go. So that to me adds to the argument. It adds a bit more colour and adds to the argument of going long the euro here. So let's set the trade up. Let's take a look at um, perhaps what's been going on since early July. We'll flip this to an hourly chart. So just to recap, I'm taking the view because the um, sentiment hasn't reached an extreme. And in fact, most people trading with us are still short the euro. I think the euro squeeze could, could still continue to squeeze higher from here. We've got this trend on the hourly chart that's been doing a great job. Uh, I've picked up from the lows from July the 10th. We've got good support coming in around about 115.50. Shorter term support uh, around about 115.80. Um, so I'm quite happy to be a, a buyer here and look to buy into that trend because um, I think that sentiment hasn't reached an extreme. We've got further to go. The trend is up. Let's set the trade up and put a stop loss in at 115.20. So I'm buying 13,000 euro dollar uh, where the price is trading now, just above 117.20. I'm putting a stop loss a couple of hundred points away and it's been a pretty volatile market. I need to give the market time to move. Um, and um, my, my uh, risk as usual is the couple of hundred pounds. Let's set that trade up. So for me, the fact that we aren't seeing an extreme uh, in sentiment, we, are, we have seen those sellers just blip down from 53% to 52%. So perhaps we are seeing some more buying come back in. Um, but the fact we, are, we aren't seeing an extreme, I'm going to trade against what seems to be something of a split opinion at the moment, but I'm going to trade with the trend and I'm going to use it as confirmation that perhaps this trend has got further to run. We'll see how it works out over the next few weeks. But that's one way of using market sentiment. But maybe that 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 split between buyers and sellers, we aren't seeing an extreme to confirm an existing trend in the market. That's it for our look at sentiment analysis. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps you know a different twist on uh, how to look at, at what's going on when it comes to market psychology. It's not perfect. It doesn't work all the time. But like I say, it can give you just an added dimension of colour when it comes to looking at markets. We'll wrap things up there. So from me, David Jones and Capital.com, good luck with your trading. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.